good afternoon everyone my name is chetna and i am your host for this webinar uh, so while working in betul district of madhya pradesh around a year back i used to come across a lot of these community information resource centers in the remotest of villages uh, these centers have been set up by the significant and intensive amount of efforts by an organization called digital empowerment foundation since then i've been quite enamored by the work of this organization which is why today it gives me immense delight to invite osama manzar who co-founded digital empowerment foundation back in 2000 for our webinar today osama is a social entrepreneur author impact speaker angel investor and sits on several government and policy committees in india as well as in other parts of the world uh now before i hand over the screen for sama i would like to just share a set of general instructions that you can now uh, see on your screens so these instructions include that the webinar will be recorded and uploaded on csip's youtube channel the session will go on for the duration of 45 minutes followed by 15 minutes question and answer round you can send your questions across using the q and a option on your screen question raised at any point during the session will be taken up in the last 15 minutes in a moderated discussion format so now i'd like to uh, welcome osama manzar i was uh, hoping to see you people uh, together like a lecture room or a, or a theater but uh, nevertheless we will go ahead with this one uh, chetna gave me uh, the topic uh, of uh, innovation on the ground in the covid time um, uh, so uh, i'll just start uh, uh, sharing few things i am osama manzar i am founder director of digital empowerment foundation uh the organization that have been working in the area of digital empowerment for the last two decades uh many of you at ashoka uh, know the organization i had a privilege to attend uh, many meetings and lectures and uh, you know and delivering few lectures also uh um, this department particularly is very close to my heart uh, because of ingrid uh and very happy to be here uh, you know chetna was i think following uh, what df was doing at the time of covid and she uh, asked me if i could you know share my thoughts and what kind of innovation that we are doing on the ground uh, at digital empowerment foundation so here i am uh, i wanted to uh and just take you back uh, with a little bit of background information that how digital empowerment foundation works uh digital empowerment foundation uh, sole purpose and objective and uh, you know uh, the mission is to empower poor poor uh, poorest of the poor and uh, to do that what we actually look at is uh, look at the problem more than the technology Uh, and we always look at technology from the perspective of the users from the citizens perspective from the users perspective from the communities perspective and uh, we don't mind using technology uh, at its frugalest best uh, and uh, and and not to the top of its being technicalities uh, and that's the way we have been working uh for the last couple of decades we have been able to uh, work and reach um, uh across 130 districts of the country uh, across 25 states and almost 700 location with physical presence of digital infrastructure and about close to 10000 digital uh, foot soldiers uh so that's a very wide network uh, we have created of the grassroots people who excel in uh, knowing technology understanding technology and who are our uh, you know ear and nose and uh, mouth and eyes uh, for uh, you know empowering people around them the villages around them and so on and so forth all our centers are digitally infrastructure from the broadband perspective from connectivity perspective from access perspective 
and all our centers look at 360 degree uh, perspective to offer solution to the local people whether it's access to education access to health access to entitlements access to government schemes access to financial services access to livelihood access to counseling access to opportunities and so on and so forth so all our foot soldiers will be uh, very equipped to do a survey to do a data entry to do uh, to gather knowledge and information most of them are trained in misinformation and fake news in terms of uh, identifying they are trainers they are uh, entrepreneurs they are uh, you know uh, social workers they are social entrepreneurs and so on and so forth so that's how uh, we work uh, you may have also heard of several awards that we have instituted, which is Manthan Award and Ambillionth Award and Social Media for Empowerment Award or ENGO Challenge, which actually gives us a chance to bring the best practices in digital development domain from all of South Asia. And we have a collection of about 10,000 such uh, best practices. And beside this, we have a network of about 5,000 grassroots NGOs whose website we built whom we digitally empowered, we host their website, we manage their websites, and they are part of our cohort and the network of all across the country and even beyond in South Asia and some of the African countries. So that's the broad background. So when COVID came, uh, you know, uh, COVID came with, with lots of, you know, um, restrictions, uh, to say the least. Restrictions of movement, restrictions of uh, applying your mind, restrictions of uh, money and resources, uh, restrictions of uh, you know reaching out to people, restrictions of uh, even thinking how to use technology to reach out to people without moving yourself. Um, uh, you know, for example, gig economy, the entire gig economy is based on physical movement or or brick and mortar economy. You know, it it cannot survive on its own. Uh, you know, uh, to if we get a chance to discuss about it, but uh, without physical economy, the virtual economy perhaps doesn't exist, and therefore our, all our presence uh, all across the country in this case of COVID became uh, extremely, you know, uh, instrumental for us. So rather than uh, panicking, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, rather than panicking, uh, you know, uh, just a second. Uh, rather than panicking to uh, you know to the situation we actually created a cohort of all our physical uh, presence all across the villages and panchayat and the district and the taluks uh, that how we can become a you know problem solution provider rather than we become a problem ourselves or we seek the solution rather than you know we provide the solution so uh, so the good thing is that all our village level infrastructure will networked all our foot soldiers are networked all of them are on smartphones so technology and the connectivity and access suddenly became uh, you know mana from heaven for all of us the second thing is that there being entrepreneurial approach and there being uh, digitally equipped was very very fruitful in terms of thinking out of the box in terms of how do we actually provide help to the uh, to the most needy people uh, in the villages you must have seen that lots of news was there of migration distress with migrate my migration um, urban distress and so on and so forth but not many people are talking about rural distress you know uh, because unfortunately in the last several decades our economy and everything has become so interdependent that to say that villages are independent and on their own is not uh, true they are also equally dependent on externalities uh, of the society and the communities and uh, therefore uh, you know we started hearing about the distress from the rural uh, india and uh, our people who were on the ground uh, started uh, giving those information so we we did three things number one we conceived what are the most important things that we can do so we first of all designed what we call as covid digital uh, emergency relief program so we conceived this with four deliverables um, we first said that uh, right information 
no fake news fighting misinformation fighting fake news will be the first thing the most important thing for all our foot soldiers is to ensure that people are receiving right information and nobody should get caught into the uh, fake news and misinformation so that was one package that we ensured and we have still been working the second thing what we uh, uh, conceived in, as a deliverable in this uh, program is um, how do we ensure that people get their entitlement so uh, government was good to announce immediately about 500 rupees or 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees for various kind of people we started ensuring that everybody gets that number one number two number three all other entitlements also should not be blocked because of the covid so even if you're pens pension or ration or anything you must continue to get it the third most important thing is since you are not allowed to go out of him out of your home how do we access money how do you bring money to you so all our people started functioning as a banking correspondent to deliver money into their home the fourth thing is um, is how do we ensure and which is actually not uh, hierarchically uh, how do we ensure that everybody has got a health kit so everybody has got uh, you know masks and cover and protection uh, and prevention both in terms of what to do what not to do and also how do you uh, really really uh, be protective and safe uh, in your uh, in wherever you are uh, and the last thing that we uh, included in this one is that how do we create a new livelihood or a livelihood opportunity even in this blockade or in this restriction or lockdown and to our surprise before even if we started you know putting a pressure on the people that this is what the four things that you need to do wherever you are we started hearing that people are already you know uh, converted themselves from being a digital entrepreneur to a you know mask makers you know so you know all the stitching machines started coming out in the houses or in the neighborhood and they started uh, stitching so if you go to the df website uh, you will see that lots of our entrepreneurs and digital foot soldiers started making uh, masks and started distributing it and many many cases they started getting orders from local hospitals local staff of government and also uh, the masses the citizens and pharmacy and hospitals and so on and so forth so that was uh, that was quite heartening uh, but then we started working on how do you convert all these centers wherever there is a possibility to become a manufacturing unit or a, you know a stitching unit for uh, you know uh, for for making and distributing masks um, and mask does not have to be n95 uh, it can be a general uh, mask for the people you know kapde ka mask or the cloth mask and uh, so on and so forth um, so that was another livelihood kind of situation that we started creating and at the back of our team what we started creating is that we started you know uh, crowdsourcing all the information to create a kit that what to do what not to do which is the uh, correct line of uh, control where do you call where do you reach out for money where do you reach out for schemes where do you reach out so all the all those entire kit the toolkit covid toolkit was created by digital empowerment foundation which we actually started distributing and we have a database of about 100000 people we uh, distributed it through our uh, email newsletter and parallelly what we also started doing is that how do we because not many organization have that kind of deep reach into the ground uh, so how do we bring the knowledge for the rest of the country and the, for the rest of the world so what we started doing is that we started conducting uh, you know uh, surveys and started talking to our people uh, designing uh, surveys so we did quick research on you know what are the five most important things that you are facing on the ground and you may go to the website and see that some of those research are already online um uh, you know farming related distress harvesting related distress cattle related distress money related distress all those things started coming in and uh, now we are on the verge of designing a very deep survey that we can conduct for the next one year 
which can do on a regular basis, monthly basis, how do we actually uh, grab the data and convert through uh, artificial intelligence, various kind of heat map of what kind of situation that the country is going through at various districts, at various uh, you know, uh, ground uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, on a daily life, how COVID has impacted. Because COVID is not only about the health impact, it's an impact on the entire ecosystem of your lifestyle. Uh, so everything is changing. So how is it changing on your supply chain? How is it changing on your jobs? How is it changing in your health? How is it changing in your uh, psychology, attitude? you know, security, insecurities, everything, you know, education and so on and so forth. So so that is what uh, we have been uh, trying to do. At the same time, of course, then we started raising funds and all of you who are there, you should also convey our message to raise funds on DEF website and help people to, uh, I mean, help us to bring people to donate. Uh, we are actually targeting around 300,000 to 600,000 families uh to help through our network of uh, 700 um, uh, centers and about 10,000 foot soldiers um, uh, who are uh, being affected because of the covid and there are various categories some of our and by the way one of the offerings uh, deliverables in our covid program relief program is also how to ensure ration is reached to the poorest of the poor who do not even have a ration card and do not have any paper to access government government entitlement so that was more from this uh, from the perspective of uh, you know organizing food or fundraising for food and so on and so forth so these are these are uh, so what was the innovation innovation was actually to how do you convert your entire uh, gamut of uh, you know foot soldiers into 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 something that they can deliver on the ground in rural areas both in terms of entitlements and in terms of information and in terms of uh, opportunities and uh, save them from uh, covid uh, financially economically and uh, from all perspective um, and how do you use technology or connectivity or access in a manner then you don't have to really go and start thinking about how do we get connectivity or access, but you already use whatever is available. So um, it was a clear case of, I mean, for example, one of the organization who wanted to work with us, they told that there are many people who are uh, unconnected in rural areas. And, uh, you know, from the information dissemination, from the perspective of misinformation and fake news, how do you reach out to such people to ensure that they receive right information? And many of our people started writing on the wall uh, in the village level in terms of uh, dissemination of information for those people who otherwise cannot have a mobile phone or connectivity and there are significant number of such people so we 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 actually uh, very innovatively mixed our brick and mortar uh, you know uh, spread of network and also technological network and both merging together we started serving uh, the society and community and also reverse um, uh, generate the knowledge from the ground to bring it to the to the policy makers and others to see how things can be planned in the long run when we are going through a extremely challenging uh, manner in terms of uh, you know uh, the whole country because of the covid so these are these are some of the ways that we are working but every day we are innovating we every day we are learning from the ground um, every day, you know, people are talking to us and trying to find out that how, uh, you know, what are the new things that will uh, that will be tried or tested or uh, you know to help people. But uh, uh, but but at the moment, what we are proud of and what we are actually trying to uh, see is that how do we maximize our network to reach everywhere in all the village level to ensure that the distress is not as much as it could be otherwise without being connected and without being having any local social entrepreneur to help out so that's the broad uh, you know i will stop here and uh, i would like to hear from some of you uh, your curiosities what would you like to hear and do you have some questions do you want to ask something that i may not have described and you will be curious that i can i can tell you please let me know
Feel free to type in your questions. So, meanwhile, uh, participants right now are typing or uh, asking questions. There was a question that came in to us, and you briefly also mentioned about it, uh, Osama. And thank you so much for updating us with so much that DEF is, has already been doing on ground. Uh, so the question was about fighting fake news itself. It uh, So how technology and digitization always has this both sides wherein we can utilize or tap on the digital availability and digital inclusion to reach out to masses, but then it also gives the responsibility and onus to people who are more equipped with the digital usage to spread or disseminate information responsibly. And how in times like the, these, when there is so much uncertainty, when there's so much unsurety, even for the experts to know what is true and what is not, how can we as responsible citizens fight this challenge of fake news? Yeah, so uh, uh, let me tell you that uh, fake news misinformation is the hallmark of all the difficult situation and, and uh, in anywhere in the world. Uh, it has become a basic, uh, you know, uh, ingredients of our communication system. Uh, more so in India because we have uh, a very large number of mobile users and, uh, uh, and the critical thinking is extremely low. Uh, so, so of course, we suffer more than anybody else. Uh, what what actually helps, and what I'm I have uh, been able to observe through our working, because we work through technology as well as through uh, human resource, is that fake news, as much as it helps, because of the technology and because of the forwards, because of the WhatsApp, because of several of the technological usage, but actually fighting it is largely dependent on uh, information cadre you know uh, how how you create cadre so something like the people you can trust you know because even if you suffer because of the misinformation in rural india where forwarding becomes the habit and everybody forwards because of, uh, because it's fun to forward but they don't have a, a response in terms of if they are uh, suffering because of the misinformation they don't have anybody to ask uh, online you know, because everybody is a consumer rather than a, a carder. So therefore, what we realize is that, uh, you know, if we have an identified number of people or the who can be trusted for, uh, you know, information, then it, it's very, very helpful. Um, and that is the reason why our carder system has helped a lot in terms of fighting misinformation. So it's 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 like uh, it's like one plus one is equal to 11, where, you know, if you have information carder, who have a network of WhatsApp users or any number of users in the network where the person is actually telling that what is right, what is wrong, because the person knows what is right or wrong, because they have they have the know-how of their trained people in terms of identifying misinformation or fake news. And then they are also source of uh, reach for the rest of the people in their areas. So according to me, you know, it would be really, really nice that if our country develops a cadre system of, uh, you know, fake news buster or the fake or the misinformation busters um, at every village level or open chat level you know uh, that will work much better um, but having said that that is not possible perhaps uh, what we do is that uh, we train people in terms of what to forward or not to forward what what to uh, uh, if you have received anything uh, uh, being forwarded is it trustworthy the person has forwarded himself or created himself is is the question that you need to ask all those things but yes misinformation and fake news is a serious part of our sufferings on a daily life in difficult situation and it has to be part of the design how to fight it in everything that we do in any kind of uh, difficult situation, whether it's uh, riots, whether it's uh, violence or whether it's, um, you know, a pandemic or uh, any kind of situation. It, this is the most important part. So I see that there is a question called, in what all ways has COVID impacted people in rural pockets of the country? What steps will need to be taken to address those? So, uh, Alicia, um, I would like to say that, you know, quickly I will tell you that 
please access to um, DF Dialogue, the video interview that <coughs> I do on a daily basis with Rural India, uh, presence of our foot soldiers. And I bring those voices uh, to the rest of the um, country and the world uh, to know what is happening in rural India. But there are five things that is happening in rural India because of the COVID. One is that access to daily wage workers opportunity for uh, aching out their life is the most difficult situation. So that means access to food, access to daily earnings is the most difficult part. The second most difficult part is that even if you have rights to access government entitlements in these kind of situation, you are still suffering because uh, you know, there is also a lot of bureaucracy, like you, like you need ration card, like you need this one and that one. You need to step out of your home, go to the uh, uh, place and then get it. So there is a lot of the third is access to money, access to cash. The fourth is that you entire agriculture sector, harvesting and everything is affected very, very badly. The fourth thing is that those who have created a lot of things that they want to supply and earn money that has been restricted either within district or within a state so that is actually restricting a lot of people a lot of people uh, so last to last week i heard that there were 300000 trucks uh, waiting in various parts of the country uh, with a carriage worth of 35000 crores so you can imagine how much that would be affecting in the economy of supply chain you know itself because everything is a standstill and uh, rural pockets are suffering more than the urban pockets because of one major uh, reason is that their information doesn't come to us very easily and that's a huge sufferings that we never come to know about their sufferings how much bad it is in any case you know we don't hear their information in a regular life now even becomes because even the media is unable to walk to the doorsteps of the people uh, to find out what is going what is happening there the second question is from anisha uh, thank you so much for giving her insights of your wonderful work on ground i wanted to know how you using ai to strategize disseminate information by reduce distress of the people in village uh, anisha we are not using ai at the moment what we are going to use is that we are going to collect the data from the ground uh, from the survey put that into ai which will create a uh, heat map of the country in terms of how covid is impacting our country in various part of the life but that is yet to be uh, to happen so that will happen very soon well those were few questions anybody else So while other attendees are uh, answering further or uh, typing in further questions, I can go back to the pool of questions that were previously sent across. Uh, one of them was, uh, how are the other operations of DEF as an organization going on? How have they been impacted? And uh, what are you? what is the organization expecting in the upcoming months? Okay, that's a very, very good question, very critical question. But so several of our work are uh, affected. Uh, I mean, for example, one of our major work is to provide all kind of services to the people through our centers on the ground is largely uh, affected at a mass level. It is happening on a door to door basis. So that is also because uh, and that is also uh, affecting in terms of numbers. So when you go to serve people door to door, you are not going to serve people door to door, uh, you know, as many people as you would have through the center. So that is certainly affected. Um, uh, uh, addressing lots of people uh, has been has been affected. We have a lot of uh, educational uh, packages and educational uh, activities that happens through the center has been affected. Um, but thankfully, some of the things have not been affected and actually helping in to design to implement at a large scale is that there is a there is a program called Goal um, going online as leaders, which is actually by design itself is a mentorship program online. 
So there are mentors like you, Chetna, uh, you will be a mentor. And then there are these five tribal girls in the village who are actually mentees. So you talk to each other on every weekend on various kind of aspects. So actually that has helped us to continue, not only continue, but also helped us to uh, expand that program across all the network that we have to do all educational programs online and through videos and through mentorship and through uh, you know uh, mobile and so on and so forth one thing is very uh, interesting in our case is that uh, most of our people are on smartphones so that helps our work still manage to take into control much uh, better than would have been standstill in other cases which we are not um uh, some of the other cases like uh, you know uh, doing survey is uh, is is affected because we do regular surveys uh, at cost uh, or as a revenue model that has affected because you know you are not allowed to move uh, so we are actually doing several of the surveys uh, surveys by using the database that that we already have to reach out to them to uh, tell them to survey rather than going face to face and ask them question and then fill it uh, and so, uh, you know, there is a lot of learning to translate mo most of our, many of our uh, brick and mortar work to uh, online, uh, which is nice. Uh, but uh, uh, like uh, in, in office, all the support staff are at home, so they are unable to function and give us a help. Most of the people are on their own with their computers. So, uh, you know, nobody has a habit of doing everything uh, online. So that's that's a lot of stress. Um, but uh, I think in our case, we have been more functional. Uh, I mean, comparatively more functional than many other organization who may be, uh, you know, dependent a lot on brick and mortar uh, movement. Uh, so I would say that we are, uh, I, I would say that if COVID uh, lockdown continues, uh, DEF may uh, be able to survive and thrive uh, longer, better uh, because of its being usage of online as a medium to solve all kind of life's problems. That really gives a clear understanding of uh, situation in organizations like DEF. Thank you so much for answering that, Osama. Uh, there was another question. Uh, before I ask the question, I would again like to remind the attendees who are present right now to keep sending in questions and we will address them. So the question uh, that was pre-sent was around digital money and how is its usage in the rural spaces and has there been a shift in the use of digital money with uh, respect to the current crisis? So uh, money is uh, money is uh, you know never digital. I guess uh, only the transfers are digital or the transactions are digital. Uh, but uh, uh, there is a lot of increment if you look at the national level uh, that the online transactions have increased per se. Uh, but uh, as far as e-commerce is concerned, that that has gone down totally uh, rock bottom. Uh, that means uh, that means anything that you use money to buy, which has to be delivered, um, uh, has gone down. But anything that is transaction from money moving from one pocket to the other, where the delivery of money has not to be translated into a goods, uh, has increased. So uh, you know, let's say sal uh, salary transfer may have increased doing online rather than uh, you know offline or usage of check or something like that. So I would say, uh, you know, how do you transact to buy things has gone down. How do you transact to transfer money has increased. Uh, in rural India, uh, at the moment, uh, using online system to buy anything is absolutely zilch. Um, people are only bothered about uh, withdrawing money and that too with a lot of difficulty when the banking correspondent goes to them. So that is actually, uh, I would say, still very helpful because even if you are not going to the bank, which is very, very difficult, long uh, stride and you have to go a long time to go into the queue and things like that, at least the money can be delivered if the banking correspondents are around. So that possibility is there. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm tending to uh, do a little bit of uh, 
you know, talk about uh, gig economy, uh, which is totally based on um, uh, on on physical movement like Google Map or let's say Ola's of the world, or for that matter, uh, anything that was using like uh, Zomato's of the world or the Swiggy's of the world. All these gig economy, which was dependent on physical movement, um, uh, it's very interesting to note that what will be their future uh, in 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 COVID kind of situation. And uh, I would say that you know the future of supply chain may have to look for uh, you know uh, not e-commerce but she-commerce. You know, it's socially uh, you know social humane e-commerce. You know, which is something like only district level procurement and supply will happen or only taluk level supply and uh, distribution will happen the entire national level and international level supply chain based uh, gig economy may not happen so uh, the future of e-commerce may be uh, more localized or globalized and uh, both in terms of procurement so it it can be a mix of uh, you know olx and uh, delivery of goods so you you uh, a lot of barter will happen within the community because you will have to build a trust based community within a geographical area and uh, you know i see that gig economy might have to turn them around into becoming a very localized uh, uh, you know uh, and contextualized service provider using digital as a technology to serve very limited number of people in a localized area rather than a very very large scale operation uh, there was one question that i saw which was very interesting and right into our allies uh, what will it take to revive the handicraft industry post covid uh, from alicia uh, so i'm glad that you already believe that the handicraft industry is is for now dead uh, we work across about 20 clusters of uh, handicraft or or handloom uh, uh, sector and everyone is stopped totally locked down no movement no more cloth making no more orders all the orders who were there is a standstill money is a standstill supplies and standstill and it's a bad 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 scene because all these are dependent on traditional skills the people who are skilled in a particular way they may not be skilled to do anything new and therefore it will affect even more and more i don't know how long will it take uh, it may take at least three to five years to revive properly if at all it revives otherwise we might have to get into uh, uh, into actually this is not only about handicraft but everything that is based on desire based economy will have to think twice because we might have to move into need based economy you know so you know everything that is essential uh, might be the uh, be the immediate uh, transformation in terms of coming back to economy but in the long term uh, everything that was based on luxury desire uh, more than your essentials uh, will go into a toss That is actually quite insightful. Uh, the combination of uh, need-based economy and the she-commerce, which uh, was quite a new term for me, uh, would act, is actually in alignment with a lot of the things about the localized economy, which even the environmental ecological crusaders have often been talking about, that there's this need to pause and sit down and just focus and be more inclined towards local economy uh, so mo moving on to the next question which was around farming practices uh, are there government policies in place in rural areas wherein there is this urge to shift from the cash crops to the food crops since that is something that we might be needing more in the coming times or have there been no shift in agriculture policies for now? I haven't seen any new policy on agriculture, but what I have I have uh, seen and aware of about is that at the moment government is very uh, much aware that it's a harvesting season, and uh, you know the farmers must be allowed to uh, go for harvesting. Um, but at the same time, 
government is worried also that uh, if the harvesting because it is expected that this time harvesting is going to uh, be uh, uh, you know bumper crop and and therefore there might be more produce than we were expecting and uh, if our uh, storages are not empty uh, then we don't have a space to keep them and there might be a lot of wastage so therefore many people were also um, uh, you know saying that we should uh, work, uh, you know uh, distribute uh, all the um, uh, food corporation of india's uh, you know storage food and distribute among the poorest of the poor because there is a need also and we might have to feed them for next several months without expectation of them being able to buy um, so uh, so uh, i haven't seen any uh, of those things but what i commonsensically see is that in food and crops and uh, agriculture sector also uh, you know there are something called essential uh, food grains and the non essential food grains you know luxury food grains so we there might be a, a serious effect on uh, you know perishable items and non perishable items um, there might be an effect on luxury based uh, um, food items and non luxury based food items uh, i'm 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 quite sure that automatically that will happen because if i have less money i will i will buy less you know um, uh, there will be less restaurants there will be less uh, you know buying and selling of food items obviously uh, the generation of uh, essential food item and non essential food item uh, will be affected and therefore it will also affect the agriculture um, you know industry uh, how how the policy is going to come up i don't know but the reality will be so you know uh, yeah one thing that i forgot to highlight which i wrote also and some of your students can go and have a look is uh, is is about connectivity uh, both in terms of broadband and connectivity both in terms of talk time and internet access because you must have read a lot of uh, migrant workers they use feature phone and they were unable to top up while they were traveling or they were moving around because they didn't have money so um, i highlighted that there are about 550 million feature phones in the country um, and about 450 million uh, smartphone um, but most of the feature phone users are the people who uh, do top up as a as a subscription of uh, uh, prepaid and most of these people will not be able to pay their uh, money for subscription because of the no income and therefore it might be very very important for government to come out with a policy of giving free talk time for the next three months to six months to uh, you know feature phone users especially uh, like the way they are saying that the ration is, access to ration is free or they are giving uh, 2000 rupees per farmer um, uh, you know as a as a uh, you know support system in the time of covid similarly i think in terms of connectivity talk time and internet access also government will have to come for a uh, with a policy to provide access to the people uh, who cannot pay for the top of time This certainly seems quite important and is also missing from the popular narrative these days in terms of the need that would go on to increase. Uh, for the benefit of people who, uh, there are some students who are working on their own initiatives for the COVID relief work and there are some alumni of Ashoka University who are working in the social sector and are trying to come up with different plans uh, to mitigate the damage of the current crisis. So uh, for them, I would like to ask, ask the question about the COVID-19 information resource kit that DEF has developed. What all does it entail and how can other organizations benefit from it who are working towards the towards a similar goal? So this information kit is made uh, generally from the perspective of access to information, misinformation, fake news, um, health information, um preventive info uh, i mean information that how to be prevent uh, prevented from covid how to take care of yourself in covid uh, in covid time what are the do's what are the don'ts uh, in covid times what are the uh, uh, things that you should look for if you're looking for a, a log for money for entitlement for government access if you're needing for help so it is actually meant for everyone 
um, and that was the purpose. Um, uh, uh, and and uh, yes, uh, I would agree that this toolkit is not only for DEF and its staff or its network, but it is for everyone. And we did distribute. And if you think uh, Ashoka University uh, would like to take use of it uh, as a study material and also as, as something that they can disseminate in their peer group, we will be happy to share with you as well. That would be really helpful. Thank you so much for answering uh, that. And uh, so that is most likely it from the questions that we got in uh, pre the web before the webinar. If uh, somebody has some questions right now, we can take in, I think, one more question, one last question, and then close out the session. OK, so. We are down to eight people now from 23. So, yeah, good. So I, I must thank I'll, at least hmm. eight people. Uh, Kushal, Gokul, Alisha, Anisha, Saili, Talha, Shivani, and Prashant uh, for uh, lasting longer than others. <laughs> A and few group, uh, one group might be having their uh, hello. Yeah, uh, yeah. You were saying something. Please go ahead. Sorry. No, no, it's. I, I was just saying that uh, there's there's a chance that some students might have uh, joined in for half of the duration because there was a class that was lined up post one twenty. So probably uh, that's why we saw a sudden drop. <laughs> we no, have no. one question uh, from Alicia. So, uh, Alicia, your question, what all opportunities lie ahead of us? So, you know, uh, this is very interesting question. And I will see this question more from the perspective of any student uh, or anybody who are into education and, uh, you know, studies and looking for opportunities and making career. And from that perspective, I'll reply to this is that, you know, uh, Post-COVID, education will not be the way we knew it. Uh, education, the way it used to be as a, as a commercial activity or as a structured activity or as a, as a process-oriented degree and uh, qualification and all those things may not exist. Uh, I, what I would see is that education's future would uh, convert into more uh, one to one or one to many in terms of counseling and mentorship and education will transform into gathering or acquiring your skills or whatever you are good at uh, to strengthen it by identifying yourself who can help you and where uh, which platform can help you and who is the person who can help you who is the cohort who can help you so it will it will it will be very very customized it will be very individualized it will be very decentralized it will be very very um, uh, contextualized um, uh, that is what i would see but as far as uh, opportunities for you is concerned it all depends that how do uh, how do you see yourself uh contextually relevant to a situation where the people have to live uh, uh more from the perspective of need based uh, rather than desire based and if you map the economy from that perspective and then map your skills and your uh, you know uh, uh, expertise from that perspective you can find your opportunity accordingly so I don't have a direct answer because I haven't mapped you about your skills and other things. But, uh, you know, you have to see the opportunity according to the situation where the last several, several decades of, uh, you know, desire based economy may go to change and it will be more need based. And therefore, you have to see uh, what will be more relevant and therefore who will be more relevant uh apologies to join lately will you please share the recorded video okay so that's logistics um, yes prashant the recorded video will be uploaded on youtube uh, after the session ends okay cool actually i also uh, put the button uh, recording but i don't know whether it will be available to me or to you uh 
it will most likely be available to me i will share the recording with you as well yeah i have also recorded from different perspective okay. but uh, but i will not use it if you are going to upload it very quickly sure uh so i think that is it for today's session uh thank you so much osama for this brilliant talk and for patiently answering so many questions that were raised and so many questions that were presented to us i'm sure uh, a lot of us have benefited from today's session and will benefit from the video that they eventually access uh, of this talk uh, thank you once again for your time and uh, we're hoping to uh, come over come over this crisis successfully uh, with least amount of damage to all of us as a society and all the best to you and your organization for the future endeavors thank you thank you very much thank you for very much it was it was a joy to to be here and i look forward to interacting with you and your cohorts more in the future